Okay, good morning everybody. Well, it's morning here anyways. Um, <clears throat> welcome back to part three of my Jasmine Beckett Griffith color long week. Um, the picture I have chosen is Voodoo in the Bayou. And uh, one thing I noticed when I looked back at my other pictures, uh, or the videos, the first two videos, is um, I have bright lights that I use when I color. So it's kind of washing her out. She's definitely a deeper green in person than what this is suggesting. So when the um, finished product is done, maybe I will... Um, uh, move the lighting a little bit or adjust it, but I need the bright lights because my eyesight is not what it used to be. <laughs> so, um, I've got a sip of my coffee here. Hmm. I've got my, um, Halloween music on and I thought we would color for sure today. I still don't know what I want to do with her hair, but I thought I'd do the voodoo doll and the, her clothing at least. And I think what I've decided to do also is um, I'm going to probably use pastels on the background and the water and maybe markers on the trees so that I go a little bit quicker. Like I said, I wanted to spend more time on her because she is the focus of everything. Um, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I forgot to do her ears. I forgot to color her ears, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm using the uh, parrot green, which I, I use the light green on the majority of her body and then I went in and um, shaded with the um let me move this back a little bit I want you guys oops I'm sorry I know I don't want anybody to get like queasy or anything for me jiggling the camera but um I'm gonna use the parrot green for her ears and uh so a few people commented, I've been looking at the comments on the other videos, and um, people made me aware that I was mistaken about Race with the Devil only being available on VHS, and so I am happy to say I was wrong about that because it's such a good movie. It's such a fun 70s horror flick to watch. Um, so I'm happy to say that people let me know that it is available on DVD and also uh, for rent on uh, like the YouTube that you pay for, that subscription service, and Amazon. So that is really, really good, and I'm happy about that. So I would say please go ahead and check that out because it's fantastic. It's a fun, fun movie. If you like Satan worship movies from the 70s. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then um, I know I said before that I was going to um, show pictures of uh, when we were dressed up like um, the Big Bad Wolf and Little Red Riding Hood. I couldn't find them. Um, so I'm going to still look for those. And I kind of thought maybe towards the end of the um, week, I would show like the last, uh, when the page is done, I would show like the things I've talked about, like the photographs and stuff. Cause I have some other things I was going to show you guys also. Um, but yeah, so I was, I was wrong about that with race with the devil, but I'm glad I was wrong. One thing about me, I never have an issue admitting when I'm wrong. I'm, you know, I'm like, Hey, you learn something new every day. And I'm grateful to be informed of the right of the right thing so um it's a really nice day here today we have to take my uh, father-in-law to the cardiologist later on this afternoon so i thought i would get this video done this morning and then try to upload it in the evening when i get home um from that so there's her ears finished and um so i thought i would do the voodoo doll i have colored a voodoo doll um, in a different picture, but I don't think it's, I don't know if it's in this book or if it was in her other, oh, yep, it was in this book. So that's how I colored that voodoo doll from um, Voodoo in Blue, and I think I'm basically just going to stick with the same uh, same colors that I used, which was like light umber and dark umber um, and a red, so I think that's what I'm going to do here. So I've already grabbed the pencils that I'm going to need and uh i've got my light umber here and uh, i'm just going to kind of give the whole thing like a a wash of color or whatever so i was trying to think about what i wanted to talk about for this installment and um <clears throat> I know I've mentioned lots of times that I'm a um, Stephen King fan. I really, I really was. I, I still like his um, older things, but I'm not really too crazy about a lot of the newer works that have come out in the last 20 years or so. 
but um, I really like his old old stuff. And um, actually, I even went. I used to go in the '90s. I used to be on a message board for Simon and Schuster, which is the publisher that did his books at that time. I don't know if if uh, they still are, but. I was on um, the message board for that, and we called that board the Green Mile because the board was green. It was it was a green color, uh, the message board, and I met a lot of people on there, and I actually met some of the people that are my best friends in real life now, um, and it's funny because we I ended up meeting a lot of people that were from Michigan, and at that time I didn't live um, in the Detroit area where I live now. I lived kind of out in the country. Um, in a park called the Irish Hills area, which is very rural. It's like a farming communities and um, tiny. But um, I met a lot of people that lived in the Detroit area on that message board. And we would get together and hang out and stuff like that. Well, eventually, you know, we started traveling together and we would go to different places and meet up with other people that, you know, were on the message board and stuff like that. It was really fun. And we did go to Maine and we did like the tour of all the places. Um, where, you know, like he's talked about in his books, we saw his home, you know, we did all that stuff. So, so I met my lifelong friends. I'm going to have to turn this sideways. I'm just not getting it this way. Um, I have met my lifelong friends on, on, uh, because of Stephen King. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Actually, I was just on messenger with one of them this, this morning and we were talking because we're going to go out to lunch on Sunday and we were trying to figure out where we want to meet up for lunch because now I live, you know, in the Detroit area. So I'm very close to where, um, the other girls live. So, um, I've actually, uh, my one friend, Tanya, I was the maid of honor in her wedding and she was in my wedding and, um, we just, we've all bonded and become very, very close to each other. And it's all because of Stephen King. So that's really cool. But, um, but anyways, so uh, I was going to tell you guys this story um, about Dean Koontz, which I have talked about this a few times, but I don't think on any of the coloring. Um, the only place I mentioned it was, um, I think, in the comment section of a video on um, from Coloring Queen. But um, my husband was a big Dean Koontz fan and is a big Dean Koontz fan. And um, I... Um, he was okay, you know, he was never like my favorite go-to author or anything like that, but I did read, um, his books, and, uh, when, back before we were married, when we used to just talk on the internet, because if you missed, um, a different video where I talked about how I met him, um, we met online on a ghost hunting message board, of all things, and, um, there was a lot of circumstances that I'm not going to get into in this video, but, but, um, he went through a lot and um, he was uh, in a house fire. I'm not going to get into too much details, but his home burned and his brother was his roommate and he lost his brother in that fire. He also lost his dog. Her name was Lucy and um, he lost her in the fire too. Well, this is back when we were, um, we hadn't started dating when he went through all that. But, um, but after, you know, he kind of, we kind of got together a few months following that tragedy. And, um, I was, you know, he lost everything in that fire, all of his books, his movies, you know, ev everything he had, he lost in that fire. Um, besides of course the loss of life that he experienced with his family member, but, and his dog, but, um, I was looking for, um, I was always trying to help him rebuild his, um, book collection, you know, because he'd lost all of his books. And, um, so, like, my friends would always give him books that, you know, they had extra copies of or gift cards to Barnes & Noble or what have you and stuff like that. Well, he really, really liked um, Odd Thomas. That was one of his <clears throat> favorite books. And uh, so I was thinking what I wanted to get him something really good for Christmas that first year that we were dating. I was like, I really want to give him something meaningful you know, that he's going to, that will really surprise him and please him and be thoughtful. So I went and I bought um, a hard cup copy, hard cover copy of Odd Thomas. And um, I wrote a letter to Dean Koontz and uh, explained how 
you know, much this book meant to Keith. Um, what happened to him, what he'd been through, you know, with the fire and losing his his brother and losing his dog and everything and how much that book meant to him because he I really identified with the character of Odd who if you haven't read the book Odd is uh, a character he's he sees the dead but my husband doesn't see the dead or anything like that but he's been through a lot of hardships and he always remains optimistic you know he he does it doesn't get him down or anything like that um and Keith just and he always has faith and Keith really identified with that um you know with odd and so I wrote this letter and I I put it with the book and I also bought a um an, a mailing envelope that was postage paid that he could send it back and I asked him if he would please autograph the book for me to give to Keith to to rebuild his collection and I think I did that I want to say I did it in like late August early September because I wanted to give it plenty of time that's it uh, Halloween 2 soundtrack on the music channel if you're wondering what that ding 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 it's kind of annoying <laughs> but um anyways so yeah I, I think I sent it off early September late August so that it would have plenty of time you know uh, to reach its destination and everything and I know he gets fan mail and stuff like that so um September came and went and uh you know, I didn't hear anything and we were into October and I didn't hear anything. And I'm trying to remember it. I know it happened before Halloween. So it had to be mid October, maybe, um, maybe it was mid October. It was before Halloween. Definitely. So now I'm going to use the dark umber and I'm going to go around the different areas of the voodoo doll. So I came home and I was kind of bummed because I had even said to Keith, I said, well, I had something that I wanted to give you, but I guess it's not going to happen. I think it fell through. So now I'm going to have to rethink because we were talking about Christmas, you know, and I said, I'm going to have to rethink what I, um, you know, what I'm going to give you, uh, for Christmas. And I had gone to work and I came home one night and there was this huge box on my porch and I was like well I didn't order anything so I didn't really know what it was so uh I looked at it and it was from Dean Coons <laughs> I was like are you kidding me and it was a huge box and it was really heavy and um it was a box that they had packed copies of his book which at that time was the new one of his newest books the good guy um it was it was one of those boxes so it was really large and I was like oh my gosh so of course I ran in the house and I opened it up and you guys I just about fainted I mean seriously I just about fainted so the first thing on the top it was all wrapped up in bubble wrap and everything hold on I gotta get a drink of coffee before I <laughs> keep telling this story hmm do you guys ever have a coffee mug that's like your favorite even though it's horrible so this is my old coffee cup that's like a travel mug and it's got a broken <laughs> it's got a broken lid on it and everything and I just cannot let it go but I like using it especially like right now while I'm filming the videos because it keeps keeps my coffee hot I know I have to retire it but I just don't want to let it go <laughs> all right so so I ran inside and I opened it and on the top was a letter. It was like packed. The letter was in a, in a clear um, plastic envelope and then it had some other stuff in inside with the letter and the letter was to me. And if you guys want, if you're interested, I will show the letter. Um, and, uh, in the next video or you know at the end when I show the other things but the letter was apologizing to me that it took so long for him to get back to me but he said that he had been in mourning because he was um had lost his own dog Trixie his golden retriever and if you're a Dean Koontz fan you know he's all about the golden retrievers and Trixie and that was his dog at that time and he had lost her. She had passed away and he couldn't write. He was just so devastated that he said he couldn't write for a while. So that put him behind on his publishing deadline. And so he really had to work to get, you know, to meet his publishing deadline. So he was apologizing to me that um, it took him so long. 
And I was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Dean Koontz is apologizing to me. But um, he was. And then um, he wrote that he had enclosed another letter that he sent to all their family and close friends when Trixie passed away. Um, it was like a letter to notify the family um, and their friends that she had passed away and what had happened and how deeply they were all going to miss her. And, uh, you know, it was just about her and how they had touched their lives. It was like kind of a, um, tribute to Trixie. And he gave me a copy of that, which blew my mind. Okay. And so then, um, he put in, you guys, this is unbelievable. He put in not only the copy of Odd Thomas that I had purchased from Barnes and Noble hard, hardback and autographed it. He put in the first three Odd Thomas novels, limited edition slip covers. Um, they were like numbered numbers such and such out of 300 or 500. I think it was 300. So he put in the first three of those and they were autographed to Keith. And then he put in uh, his new book at that time was The Good Guy. He put that in and he autographed that to Keith. And he it was really neat how he autographed it. On the title page, it said, To Keith, one of the... And then it had like an uh, arrow pointing down to the title where it said The Good Guy. And then he put an S next to it. So it said one of the good guys. And then um, I'm trying to think what else he put in. It had... So the, the Odd Thomas I sent him, the three Odd Thomas slip-covered books, The Good Guy, and there was something else, I can't re besides my letter and the other letter, I can't remember what else was in there. But all this stuff, I just about fainted. I mean, how wonderful of a person must he be to do that? And I had already heard really good things about him because I had a friend in Iowa named Janice, who unfortunately she's no longer with us. She passed from pancreatic cancer. But she had worked with a woman who was a big Dean Koontz fan and had become ill with cancer herself. And somebody had contacted Dean Koontz and told him how much she um, loved his books and was such a big fan. And he actually had this woman who had cancer um, out to his home in California and he and his wife took this woman and her family um, out on their boat and had a uh, spent a, a day with them on the boat and had a uh, made a, prepared a big meal for them and just was a really wonderful experience so I knew that he was very fan friendly and um, you know like a a, a nice guy and everything, but I never in a million years expected all that. So anyways, now at that time, like I said, I was living uh, out in the Irish Hills area where I was from. And uh, I didn't live near Keith. We lived about an hour uh, apart. It used to take me about an hour and 15 minutes to get to his place for mine. So, and I had to work all week, so I wasn't going to see him till the weekend. I could not control myself. Like, I was so excited, you guys. I was just so excited to um, to give him that stuff. And, I, of course, I told all my friends and everything. And so then when uh, finally on Friday I had to go to work and then I was off on the weekend. So I took the stuff with me to work on Friday. And um, I was going to head out to his place and stay at the weekend with him right after um, work. And so by the time I got to his house, I was like, I was so excited. Seriously, it was ridiculous how excited I was. I couldn't even, like, communicate effectively. I was so ridiculously excited. But the box was really heavy. So um, I told him, I'm like, okay, go sit on the front porch. Go sit on the front porch. And and I and close your eyes. <laughs> and so, and so um, there I was lugging up this this box and I set it beside him on the front porch and then I told him I'm like okay you can open your eyes and he like was really confused he had this really confused look on his face you know and um he had also written a letter I don't know if he wrote a letter to Keith too I can't remember right now I'd have I'll have to look for it. we have the books are on a bookshelf upstairs on display in our living room and um we have the letters and stuff down in our bedroom um where they won't get 
you know, messed up. But I'll have to look and see. But I remember he wrote, it must have been in my letter, he wrote um, that my Keith sounded like a wonderful person. And, you know, because I had really talked about Keith and how great he was and just how I loved him so much and hoped at that time that we would be married. And, you know, he talked about how Keith sounded like a wonderful person and he hoped that he would always maintain his faith and humanity and not let things get to him even though he'd gone through the things he went through. It was really, really nice. And by the time Keith got through reading all this stuff and looking at the books and everything, I mean, he was very emotional about it. He was really, really emotional. And so then, of course, then we had to show them off to everybody that would come by or listen. And my friend Laura, the one I was messaging with this morning that I'm going to lunch with on Sunday, she was like, you guys got to come up and bring me the book so I can look at them. So we went up to her place. She lives uh, on the other side of Detroit, up up uh, further north. And so we went up to her place and, um, and uh, I want to make sure this was still in the camera. And so you know, we showed them to her and she was like amazed at how wonderful they were. And it was just a really, really good experience. And you know, the thing is, this is like, and I'm not comparing apples, or apples to oranges because each person is different, but I really was always a huge Stephen King fan my whole life. You know, as an adult, I had read his books and I really liked them. And I was a big Stephen King fan. And I was lucky enough to get to go to a book signing of his in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, when he came out with From a Buick 8. I actually won a raffle where I was able to attend a signing and I met him and it was really, really nice. But I will say this, Stephen King is not fan friendly like that. I mean, he's nice in person and, and everything like that, but he does not answer fan mail. He, um, if you write him a letter, basically, unless there's really extenuating circumstances, you're not going to hear back from him. He's just not fan friendly like that and that's okay every person is individual and is different and everything but um yeah he's just not that way and I know that had I tried to write a letter to him I never would have saw that book again which is you know he never would have sent it back let alone done all that stuff now I'm not saying he's not a good person or anything like that he just is more guarded with his fans he's not as open with them as um as Dean Koontz is, and that was wonderful. So, of course, Keith also did um, write this huge heartfelt thank you letter and sent it back to him. Um, and then we actually sent him, when we were married, we sent him another letter, um, you know, updating him, saying that, uh, you know, again, thank you so much for the books and everything. And then we ended up, we did get married, and we were really grateful to him for creating one of our wonderful memories that our relationship was, you know, established on and everything like that. But we never heard back from him again, but that's okay. You know, I mean, he's got a lot to do. <laughs> so, so yeah, so now I'm a Dean Koontz fan too, but I will be honest with you. I'm still not crazy about all of his books. It's just his writing style, but as a person, he's aces in my book. You know, I just, I can't say enough about him. So I'm working on the voodoo doll. I'm gonna take another drink of my coffee. Where are we at? 23. My um my camera my, ran out of memory on part two. That's why it just cut off at the end. It it cut off. So I happily I freed up some space on it. So hopefully that won't happen again. Mmm, my coffee's good. I've got some um what do you call it? I've got some peppermint mocha creamer. I'm going to put this orange, mineral orange color. I'm going to put a little bit of it in this um, blue doll too, just to give it some more color. Can you guys hear this song? Worms crawl in, the worms crawl out.
Yeah, I like that orange in there hopping a little bit. So, um, I had a comment, which it's funny because it was something I was going to talk about anyways. When I did the video, the first video with the horror movies, um, somebody, it was Jen, she asked me about, um, what I thought about the exorcist. And I thought about talking about the exorcist when I was, um, making it, but I didn't. The exorcist is not one of my favorite horror movies, which is unusual. I know because it's really considered probably one of the scariest movies ever made. And a lot of people really, really like it. It's not one of my favorites personally. Um, it's, I don't know how to explain how I feel about The Exorcist. I love The Exorcist novel. If, I highly suggest you read it. If you've never read it and you love horror, I would read the novel. It is so good. The novel is excellent. But the, the movie, to me, kind of crosses a line. I don't like the idea that they use Linda Blair, who was so young at the time, and put her in a situation to be using that kind of dialogue and content. Um, if you've seen it before, you'll know what I'm talking about, but the content with the crucifix, um, what she does with that, it, it's not anything that I, you know, I just, I cringe when I see that. Um, the language that she uses, and I just can't imagine having a young daughter and wanting her to be a part of something like that. I just, I don't know, just not my thing, you know? Um, and I think that it's just disturbing to me. The fact it's not the movie itself, although it is frightening, you know? Um, and the content is certainly frightening, but I, I just, I'm more disturbed by the fact that this young girl, this preteen girl or young teen girl, I'm not sure how old she was, um, you know, is using that language and performing those kind of scenes, um, just not my thing. You know, I, it really bothers me, but, um, like I said, the novel is another story. I really, really like that. I think that's really, really good. I highly recommend that. I have a funny story about that. I don't know if I have time before it cuts off. Yeah, I do. I was reading the novel one night. Now, this was um, before I met Keith. This was years ago when I had a different... Uh, I was with somebody else. And he had worked overtime. Or he was supposed to be working overtime. So I was laying in bed and I was reading The Exorcist. And he had come home from work. And he didn't have his key or something happened. And he couldn't get in. or I don't know what happened. But anyways, our apartment was the on the... Um, ground floor the first floor so he he's he walked over to the bedroom because he saw the light was on in there and the, i was reading and he knocked on the bedroom window and i was t at a part where in the book they were talking about um scratching noises coming from under the bed and he knocked on the bath the bedroom window and i went from a i was completely laying down in bed reading a book and all of a sudden i was like standing up in the middle of the bed and the book had been thrown across the room and i have no idea how i moved that fast i don't think i've ever moved that fast in my whole stinking life but i was like out of there <laughs> you know what i mean i don't know it was kind of crazy i was just like out of that area it scared the daylights out of me so i'm using tuscan red um, to do these little uh, stitch marks and uh, where he's tied together. Let's see. So we're almost at 30. I'm going to go ahead and stop it because I know it's going to shut off anyways. And then I'll just restart it in a second. All right, you guys. See you in a bit. <laughs> 